guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part 10 of our roll top desk build. Well, when we left last week's show, we had the um, cubby hole carcass all clamped together and waiting to dry. And uh, when I came out to the shop this morning, first thing I did was to unclamp that and give it a really good sanding all over just to finish it off. Um, that top surface, that cap that I put on that was three quarters of an inch thick, I actually routed a profile in that, a very small one, a very small profile, and it turns out it was kind of pointless because it's in so far in the desk that you don't even really see it anyway. Um, but carrying on with the build, there's a few other things that I'd like to do to this carcass before we move too far forward with the drawers. And the first thing will be a backer board for it. Well, here we can see the cubby hole section. And although I, I don't really think that a backboard is 100% necessary, I have concerns that over the longevity of this desk, uh, I'd like it to be an heirloom. As it goes through the years, I'm afraid that this back unit might start to sag a little and we might start to lose this two inch clearance here. And for that reason, just for a little extra support, I'm going to be uh, installing a piece of um, quarter inch thick red oak plywood um, just to support this and help to prevent the sag to take some of that weight off of this assembly. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to cut it to size, put it in place, and I'll just be using little brad nails to hold it in place. And I think that should be just fine. So I'm going to add the backboard to that. And then once we get that done, we're going to move on to the next step. And with that, our backboard is installed. I don't know, you probably can't see it on camera, but we'll do this and you can see that there's a backboard there now. I've nailed it in through any of these horizontal surfaces at the bottom to give it that extra support. So I have nails along here, along here, and along here, as well as the perimeter around the, uh, the cubbyhole carcass. Well, now that we've got that part done, what I want to do is I need to cut and, and uh, mill the dividers that will go in these three slots here. Now, these slots are slated to be an eighth of an inch thick, and I think mine are a little bigger than that. So I'm going to take a caliper measurement of this, and I'm going to mill some red oak stock the width of this piece right here, and the thickness of these grooves and then we're going to talk about what shape we want to make those particular dividers. Well I made several test templates out of uh, hardboard and I made several different designs from simple to fancy and uh, you know I, I think I want to keep it simple. The plans actually call for just a straight line down here and I, I really don't like that idea. I want some kind of contour, but I think this is too fancy. So we're gonna get rid of that. And I think that this is the design that I'm gonna go with, if you even wanna call it a design. So I have the template here. I know how it looks when it's sat in place. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this as a template. I'm gonna mark out my pieces of oak that I've cut, give them a sanding and um, once I get them cut on the scroll saw, I'll slide them here into place and we'll be done with that. Um, I may glue them in, I'm not sure at this point in time, just to give it a little bit of extra strength here, I might glue them in, but I'm not sure if I also want them to slide out or not. Uh, I'll decide that when the time comes. But for now, I can cut them and uh, put them into place. And once you get these pieces done, you can just slide them into place. And then these sections here are finished. Um, I think I've decided I'm not going to glue these in. I'm going to give myself the option that if I need a bigger storage area in any one of these sections, I can just pull out a divider as well. 
if I ever decide on, des on a uh, design change here, well, I have that option now as well. Um, I did round over the inside profiles here just to make it a little easier on the fingers, but I left these ones here at top and bottom nice and crisp. So I think the next thing that I want to work on now that I have these center cubbies uh, straightened out is there are some cubby holes on the end way over here. You can barely see it. It's almost off screen. But I'm hoping that those ones are going to house things like uh, computer peripherals and uh, cables. So I'm, I'm going to need a panel cover or a cover for each one of those. So I'm going to mill that and we'll get those panels put in place. And there you can see we've got uh, both of the panels installed. Well, you can see that one. I'm blocking the other one. And I'm hoping to store the computer cables in behind there. Now, of course, how do you access in behind? Uh, well, I've equipped these with uh, magnetic closures, which will release it and allow you to pull it out. And of course, these particular closures, when touched with a, a magnet, um, they release the, the mechanism to allow it to open up. So it's up to you. You can do something like this if you like or not. It's, uh, it's all personal preference now at this point in time. But use your imagination here and uh, make some interesting features in this section. Well, the cubby hole section is complete with the exception of the drawers that will go in the various areas. It's very difficult for me to tell you what size these drawers are because I don't know your preference. You really have to think about what you want to do with these. For my particular drawers, um, I'm going to do an oak face with a maple body. Uh, it originally was going to be a poplar body, but then I accidentally milled the wrong stock and thought, I can live with maple. I'm going to be doing rabbited fronts so that the actual opening uh, for the drawers is hidden with uh, a ridge around the outside. You may decide that you want drawers that sit flush inside. So depending on what it is that you want to be doing, um, it's very difficult for me to turn around and tell you how to do it because I don't know your preference. I'm going to be using a dovetail jig and doing half blinds with a rabbited drawer front. And um, if you guys aren't sure how to do that, I'm going to be using a, a, a Lee D4R Pro jig. And if you're not sure how to do that, you can check out my tutorial for that that I posted a while back. And uh, you can find out all you need to know on how to do that on that video. Once again, another video that was posted. Uh, as a preface to this build and in fact in that video it is these drawers that are being routed so you'll get the idea of exactly how to do it. But I'm going to route all of these drawers. I'm going to get them all prepped up and fit into place with their hardware and once I get those drawers in place I'm going to come back and see you and show you exactly what it is that we've got done for this area and how it turned out. Well, you can watch all the tutorials of mine that you want and it's not going to prepare you for the problem I've run into with this build <clears throat> and that is the small size of pin boards that are associated with the smaller drawers of this cubby hole section. And what the problem is is that the depth here from the routing surface to the clamping surface just isn't big enough or small enough rather to clamp this piece so it's just too small. But that's what woodworking is about sometimes is finding a problem and coming up with a safe uh, alternate method that you can still do it and uh, still be able to get the product that you want. So what I've done is we're going to slide this piece in up against the depth stops. We still have our piece in the front here that you would normally have when routing the pin boards of a uh, 
of, of a blind dovetail joint. So we're going to push this all the way to the front till it butts up against this board, all the way to the left to the stop, and then we're going to get a scrap piece, push it in with some pressure, and clamp it down. Now once we get that clamped in, it's not going to move now to the front or back, and it cannot go to the left because of the stop. It still can go to the right. So for that, another piece of half inch stock. I'm going to pull it in tight to get it to lock it against that depth stop. And then I've got a large 12 inch quick, quick grip here that we are going to clamp down with a spacer block here. You don't want to clamp on the jig bar. So I'm clamping down on this piece of half inch stock. And now our drawer piece is solidly in there and we could route the pin board without a problem of it shifting. It does take a little longer, but that is what I had to do to get the size drawers that I want. And with that, all of the drawers are dovetailed. They still require some sanding. We have a little bit of burring here in the pin boards, etc. A little bit of sanding. But the next step that we're going to do with these is cut the dados in each one for our um, bottoms. And for that, we're going to be using some leftover pieces of our quarter inch oak plywood that we used for our backer board of this cubby hole section. So I'm going to cut the bottom piece or the dados in all of these quarter inch deep, quarter inch wide. And um, basically, once you get those cut, we're going to assemble the drawers. Well, we've got everything set up for the glue up. I've got the hardware installed on this little drawer just to, just for the video. Um, I will be removing them obviously when I finish this project, but all we're going to do is apply some glue around the edges here on all of these tails and then using the uh, wackometer here, we're just going to assist ourselves in uh, putting this together and then we're going to let it sit for a few hours, but be sure you clean up the squeeze out guys. Once you get that one there like that, <clears throat> you could just line these pieces up and just with your with your wackometer, just give them a couple whacks to get them in place. And once you're happy with the alignment, of course, then you can clean up the squeeze out. Check them for square and uh, let them sit. Uh, I've checked that one for square and everything looks good. We're just going to glue in our second or our last panel here of this drawer, making sure we get good glue coverage on each one of these tails. This is a time consuming process and I mean you don't have to do dovetails if you don't want to but I tell you it sure does make a difference in the project. Really gives it that extra something. And there we have our first drawer um, glued together and we can just set this aside and we'll give this a sanding a little later on. Um, to clean up any uh, imperfections that there might be, but it actually feels pretty good at this point. And of course we've checked the inside. It's all square all the way around. A cute little drawer. Looks great and it'll look really good in our project. 
And with that, we have all 12 drawers completed. And uh, they will need a final sanding, but they're glued together and, well, this section is done. Um, the next thing that we need to move on to is the baseboards. And in fact, that is one of the uh, final of the, the last two things to do. But for that, we're going to need some three-quarter stock. Well, the baseboards on this desk are four inches tall, and they're made from three-quarter inch thick material. I've milled all of the oak that I need to three-quarters of an inch thick. I'm now going to joint one edge and then rip it at four inches. From there, it's just a matter of cutting it to length. Now, I think that on the front of the desk and on the back, which is more so on the front, is the focal point when you're looking at that desk, I think I'd rather have that overlap on the outside. These are just butt-jointed um, baseboards. There's nothing fancy about them, but I don't want to see that joint when I'm looking face-on on that desk. So the measurements for the pedestals are actually going to be an extra inch and a half wide to compensate for the three-quarter thick baseboard that will be on the inside and the outside edge of those pedestals. With that being said though, let's get that wood jointed and ripped to four inches wide. The baseboards are cut and dry fit to the carcass of the desk. We're going to be screwing them in place from the inside of each of the pedestals along with a couple strips of wood glue on them. But first we need to round them over and for that I'm going to be using a 3 8 diameter roundover bit. And although we still have a few clamps on there to hold it in place, the baseboards are all glued and screwed in place. Um, you'll want to be careful if you've placed it on a dolly like what I've done here that the squeeze out doesn't come out through the bottom and glue your desk to your dolly. But uh, either way, the baseboards are in and it really sort of caps off the bottom end of this whole thing and, and gives it that extra something. You know, it really ties this whole thing together. Let me just pan out here and uh, slide over to show you the way it finishes this base off. Really gives it that uh, little extra girth at the bottom that I think it really needed. So we're going to leave those clamps on and let it dry. For the record, I used inch and a half screws and uh, to hold it in place, as well as a couple beads of glue. And uh, we're going to leave this now to dry. But while we're waiting, we can move on to the next and uh, I think the final piece of this build. And that would be the pencil tray. Now for the small pencil tray of the large center drawer, all I've got is a piece of three quarter inch thick poplar, same material that we made the drawers out of, and it's two and a half inches wide, and it is the same length as the inside dimension of that drawer from left to right side. For me, that's 19 and 9 sixteenths. And all I've done is I've set up a one inch a uh, flat bottom dish cutter here in the router table and I've got it set to well you know what it's really not a matter of the height right now I'm going for a visual so I've just got it up just a little bit here and with a depth stop and I'm just going to go along and router out some side kind of channels here and I'll do one on each side and then a long one in the middle and I'm going to keep moving the fence back each time in order to get uh, the width of the tray that I like. So I'm going to route this. I'll show you a little bit of the process along the way. And then hopefully you'll be able to uh, carry on and do your own from what you've seen me do here. have the first part of the routing. I'd like that to be a little deeper so I'm going to raise the router bit up a bit and we do have a bit of burning here. 
I'm not too concerned about that. Poplar is soft and I will be able to sand that out afterwards. Well, you should end up with something that looks like this, hopefully without as many burn marks as what I've got on here. Uh, my bit isn't the sharpest, but I've got quite a bit of sanding ahead of me here, so I'm going to go and do that, and uh, when I'm done cleaning up the burn marks in this and get it all sanded in place, I'll uh, come back and see you. And with some considerable sanding, my own fault, shouldn't have used a dull bit. Uh, we have our pencil tray finished. And this, of course, just sits in the front of your large front drawer. And it can hold your pencils, erasers, you know, paper clips, that sort of thing. And uh, that would be the final piece of this build. And there you have it. Pretty freaking swanky, if I do say so myself. Guys, this is one heck of a project. Um, a ton of hours, a ton of work. Uh, to be quite honest, I'm glad it's over and I can get my shot back to normal. Building a project of this size is... Um, absolutely crazy in a shop the size of mine but I managed and uh, I got it done there's still quite a bit of work to do on this desk as far as the final sanding and then of course the finish and I'm gonna see how it goes but I think even though this is episode 10 and the end of episode 10 um, and the end of our build I'm thinking I'm going to put it to episode 11 in which I will show just brief snippets of how I'm going to go about doing the finishing and uh, as well I think I'd also like to go through some of the discrepancies that I found in the plan and kind of tell the story as to how that all unfolded because I did end up hearing back from the people that actually put this plan out. So um, it was an interesting little story with that. So next week's show is not necessarily a woodworking show or a woodworking project, but it is still in regards to this uh, being the roll top desk. And uh, just before I, I go and leave you guys, let's just close the desk as we close the build. Guys, I want to thank you for joining me on this 10-part series. It's been one heck of a ride. I've had a lot of fun. I've got a lot of cleaning in this shop to do and uh, a lot of sanding and a lot of finishing work. So I want to thank you for joining me and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.